Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. How many joules in a 12 gram CO2 cartridge? You think you know the answer, right? Well, let's talk about what the physics say. Now, I don't normally talk about my credentials because it's completely irrelevant for almost anything that I'm talking about on this channel. But for this particular video, it is important that you know that I do have some experience. I am a scientist, I have a PhD, and I've been studying science and doing research for over 30 years. And I think it's important for you to realize that I'm not just speaking with lack of knowledge, and I do have prior experience in various areas of science. And I have not done physics in a long, long time, but I still have enough knowledge to be able to, to talk to you about a topic related to physics and CO2 and the amount of joules in the cartridge, I think is a really interesting topic. All right, so with that said, I, I just have to have another disclaimer that physics is a very different discipline from uh, biochemistry. Uh, and biochemistry is what I'm been more focused on as it relates to cancer cell biology, drug therapeutics, and, um, and various types of uh, therapeutic approaches. So, but I am gonna share with you a really interesting blog. Um, it's a physics uh, blog, and they, were, they came up with the question, and a bunch of guys were trying to figure out how much energy is in a CO2. And they chose a 12 gram CO2, which is the big one here. This is eight gram and a 12 gram. We, we know what these give us when you use these for either a BB gun for plinking, or you use it even in less lethal. You can do the math and you can determine how many joules your launcher is getting uh, out of that CO2 before it's completely spent. And there's the amount that you get in a practical real world, and, and that's really all that really matters is what we can actually achieve. But then there's also the physics of the matter of what's actually happening here. And in no way am I gonna go into those details, no way am I gonna go through the mathematics, but I just want to, uh, f I think it's a fun thing to think about is theoretically what is the maximum amount of joules that this thing actually is capable potentially, it has the potential under perfect conditions. And I will define those perfect conditions because there are a lot of inefficiencies in, in actual real life, in reality. Uh, there's lots of ways in which the air can be lost in your launcher. And there's a lot of things that will, will cause that number to come down, down, down. But the reality is the number, as you saw in the thumbnail, I'm sure, is a lot higher than you would have ever imagined. So let's take a look. I'm gonna scroll you through some of the discussion, make a few points, and then we'll come back here and, and then we'll talk about this a little bit more as it relates specifically to your launcher. That's gonna be really important for you to know because it will give you insights uh, in how you might think about re reaching closer to that potential. Um, although I think a lot of things have already been tried, but there are a lot of a lot of theoretical reasons that you could be able to improve the efficiency. And let's talk about it. I think it's an interesting topic. Now this is the site. It's a physics forum, classical physics, thermodynamics section. And it's pretty detailed. These guys really gave it a, a college try. And I'm just gonna scroll down. There were a few points that I think is just important to keep in mind. So this was done on a standard 12 gram CO2 which we know contains both liquid and gaseous CO2, and an 850 PSI is gonna be the pressure that you get when you puncture that cartridge. So we all, we all know this. So this is where they started out. They went through a series of calculations that I'm not gonna bother you with as I scroll down, but they did a number of calculations based on that, and then they realized that uh, they were using a closed system, an adiabatic system. This is called A-D-I-A-B-A-T-I-C, adiabatic. That means it's a closed system. There's no heat can go out or no heat can come in. We know that that's not the case. When you puncture the CO2, the thing gets really cold as the pressure, the, you have pressure changes and the CO2 is gonna cause that cartridge to get very cold. Uh, so 
There's, there's definitely an adiabatic system. They determine very quickly that that is not the right way to do it. So they, they switch to a closed system, which is an isothermal process. This just simply means that, uh, just like in real life, uh, heat can go out, cold, cold can come in. Uh, the, the net um, temperature within the system is going to stay the same because you're going to have heat loss or you're going to have temperature changes. So that was taken into account in terms of these calculations, and that's what is reflected in all of these. But ultimately, uh, they came to the conclusion that it was an isothermal process, which I think is, is definitely the right conclusion. And so as we go down, they started to do a number of calculations and taking into account what happens when there is a real gas and it's compressed, and they use uh, a compressibility factor to further determine what happens when you puncture that 12 gram CO2. Now, the, the guy who proposed this question here, he was, uh, he was an air gun shooter. So he said, you know, I know that I can get about 50 shots out of my Daisy BB gun, and that's about a 5.5 grain BB, uh, and it goes about 500 feet per second, and he determined that's about 4.1 joules. So when he extrapolates that out, he said, okay, well, I can get about 200 joules out of 112 gram CO2. And that's, not, that's, that's actually pretty close to the right ballpark because if you think about it, let's say we have a launcher that'll put out 40 joules on average over six shots. Well, that's, uh, that's in that range. So somewhere in the 200 to 250 joule range is the realistic what we consistently get out of an air gun. Well, what happens if, if the air gun was perfect? What happens if it had a barrel which was uh, unlimited in length? What happens if there was no air loss? It was totally efficient. Well, those are the kind of things that they took into account in these calculations. And in that particular case, the, the final result was pretty astounding. So as we scroll down and they take into account the expansion that occurs and they use a compressibility factor and they determine this and they finally found some curves in a textbook which I think were very much on target from what you what you would expect they were getting really close and so this gave them an overall general idea of how they were going to solve this problem they came to the final number and it was shocking to everyone. So he boiled this down to a number of 3,273 joules, and he was shocked it's so high. And he comments about how inefficient the, the BB gun must be. And, you know, even if you take into account some basic inefficiencies, maybe you can double this from 200 up to 400, but you never could get to 3,000. So again, it's, it's a very interesting problem that was addressed. Uh, but I'm just saying I think it makes a lot of sense that the theoretical physics would show that the amount of joules from a CO2 is a lot higher than we get. So what is the significance of this information? Well, the take-home message that I think you want to remember is that these things should not be underestimated. There, there is a lot more potential energy in these than you would ever imagine. And the other take on message that I get is that even though the 12 gram CO2 has been sort of the average and the standard, even the lowly 8 gram CO2 has more than enough potential power there to generate really high joule shots if we can just preserve this CO2 and be more efficient. And then that opens the doors to really small launchers. So if, you can, if we can go back from 12 gram back to eight gram and now start to use launchers based on eight gram CO2, but, but the launchers are more air efficient and perhaps the entire internals of that launcher are expansion space as opposed to a dedicated air chamber, perhaps the entire, even, even the handle or the grip um, if that includes air expansion space. Now you suddenly you're starting to get the uh, potential to tap into this energy and get the power that you want in the small size that you want. I'm not talking about 100 joules here, but I'm talking about smaller launchers that still keep this kind of power that we've gotten used to with the 12 gram CO2. If you can do that, that's the magic. And I think that's what 
uh, manufacturers need to think about is how they make the system better and how they uh, take advantage of the physics because the physics says that there's plenty of energy here. That's my take home message. Um, how we tap into that though is for people to innovate and to discover, but I'm gonna leave it right there. Everybody take care, see you next time. That was just amazing shot. I mean, how often can you get penetration like that on concrete blocks? Amazing, 68 caliber is the real deal.